Imagine standing at the edge of a vast ocean, the horizon stretching endlessly before you, where sky meets water in an infinite embrace. The waves crash rhythmically against the shore, each one persistent, powerful, and unyielding. They seem untamable, a mirror of the worries and fears that so often overtake our hearts. Life, like the ocean, feels vast and unpredictable, filled with challenges that appear insurmountable. The unknown stretches out before us, and in moments of doubt, we feel small, helpless, and vulnerable against its magnitude. But pause for a moment. Look beyond the wave's turbulence. Beneath the surface chaos lies a divine rhythm, a heartbeat of creation, constant and assured. The tide flows with purpose, guided by the gravitational pull of forces far beyond human comprehension. The ocean, vast as it may seem, is held within boundaries set by God. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I said, this far you may come and no farther. Here is where your proud waves halt. Job 38, 8, 11. The God who commands the ocean's expanse is the same God who watches over your life with infinite care and precision. This divine order amidst the apparent chaos speaks volumes about God's character. Just as he orchestrates the rise and fall of the waves, he orchestrates the details of our lives. He calls us to trust him, not because the waves will cease, but because he is Lord over them. In the same way that the ocean reflects beauty and purpose in its relentless motion, so too does our journey through life. Even when challenges seem overwhelming, we are invited to rest in the assurance that God's plans are perfect. He does not simply observe the ocean from a distance, he walks on it. So too, he walks with us, inviting us to release our burdens and trust him fully. Worry is a silent thief, creeping into the corners of our minds and hearts with deceptive ease. It doesn't announce its presence loudly but works subtly, draining us of peace, stealing the joy from our days. And even taking a toll on our physical well-being. It weighs heavily on the soul, burdening it with fear and uncertainty. Philippians chapter 4, 6 offers us a lifeline amidst this struggle. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Yet, despite this clear invitation, worry often feels like an unwelcome companion we cannot shake. C.S. Lewis poignantly observed, God cannot give us a happiness and peace apart from himself. Because it is not there. There is no such thing. Worry thrives in the space where trust in God falters. When we allow fear to overshadow faith, even for a moment, our minds become a storm of what-ifs and worst-case scenarios. We fret over the unknown, obsess over what lies beyond our control, and lose sight of God's presence in our lives. But the absence of peace is not because God withholds it, it is because we turn away from the source. Much like a child who clings to a broken toy instead of bringing it to a loving parent for repair. We clutch our anxieties tightly, as if we can solve them ourselves. Worry whispers that we must hold on tighter, but God calls us to release. He promises that when we bring our concerns to him in prayer, with thanksgiving, acknowledging his goodness, his peace will guard our hearts and minds. The antidote to worry is not found in striving but in surrender, trusting fully in the one who holds every moment of our lives in his hands. Worry is a silent thief, creeping into the corners of our minds and hearts with deceptive ease. It doesn't announce its presence loudly but works subtly, draining us of peace, stealing the joy from our days, and even taking a toll on our physical well-being. It weighs heavily on the soul, burdening it with fear and uncertainty. Philippians chapter 4, 6 offers us a lifeline amidst this struggle. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Yet, despite this clear invitation, worry often feels like an unwelcome companion we cannot shake. C.S. Lewis poignantly observed, God cannot give us a happiness and peace apart from himself, because it is not there. There is no such thing. Worry thrives in the space where trust in God falters. When we allow fear to overshadow faith, even for a moment, our minds become a storm of what-ifs and worst-case scenarios. We fret over the unknown, obsess over what lies beyond our control, and lose sight of God's presence in our lives. 
But the absence of peace is not because God withholds it. It is because we turn away from the source. Much like a child who clings to a broken toy instead of bringing it to a loving parent for repair, we clutch our anxieties tightly, as if we can solve them ourselves. Worry whispers that we must hold on tighter, but God calls us to release. He promises that when we bring our concerns to Him in prayer, with thanksgiving, acknowledging His goodness, His peace will guard our hearts and minds. The antidote to worry is not found in striving but in surrender. Trusting fully in the one who holds every moment of our lives in his hands. Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, spoke directly to the futility of worry in Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 27. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Dot, when we find ourselves consumed by worry, it's often because we've lost sight of three foundational truths that anchor our faith. First, we forget God's sovereignty, the comforting reality that he holds the entire universe in his hands. Think of the birds soaring freely in the sky, unburdened by the cares of tomorrow, or the flowers adorning the fields with breathtaking beauty, untouched by anxiety. Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 6, 26, look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? If he lavishes such care on the smallest creatures, how much more will he provide for us, his beloved children? Secondly, we forget our immeasurable value to God. The cross stands as the ultimate testament to how deeply we are loved. Jesus didn't lay down his life for sparrows or lilies, he died for us, broken, flawed, yet infinitely cherished. In those moments when worry whispers that we are alone, unworthy, or forgotten, we need only look to the cross. It declares loudly and clearly, you are priceless to God. Lastly, we overlook the futility of worry. It achieves nothing but steals everything, our peace, joy, and focus. As Jesus asks in Matthew chapter 6, 27, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Worry can't change the past or control the future. It only robs us of the beauty of today, the very day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in. When we remember these truths, His sovereignty, our worth, and the uselessness of worry, we find the strength to let go and trust Him fully. God calls us to exchange the weight of our worries for the lightness of His grace, reminding us that He is faithful, always. Worry often stems from a misunderstanding of God's character. We doubt his goodness, his timing, or his ability to meet our needs. This doubt, though natural, is a direct challenge to the promises found in Scripture. Matthew chapter 6, 33 offers a solution, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. C.S. Lewis beautifully explained the essence of trust in God when he said, relying on God has to begin all over again every day as if nothing had yet been done. Trust isn't a one-time decision, it's a daily, moment-by-moment -moment choice. Overcoming worry begins with intentional steps that lead us closer to God and farther from our fears. The first step is to anchor yourself in prayer, the most powerful tool we have to connect with our Creator. Prayer shifts our focus from the problem to the problem solver. As the transcript reminds us, you can pray or you can panic. Each morning, surrender your anxieties to God, whispering, the Lord is my shepherd, and trust him to guide you. In those moments of doubt, let prayer become your refuge and strength, grounding you in the peace that only he can provide. Next, immerse yourself in God's promises by meditating on scripture. His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Illuminating the darkness of worry. Write down verses like Philippians chapter 4, 6-7, Do not be anxious about anything, or the comforting assurance of Psalm chapter 23, 1-3. Speak these truths aloud when fear arises. As C.S. Lewis wisely said, We are mirrors whose brightness is wholly derived from the sun that shines upon us. 
Allow the brilliance of scripture to fill your mind and heart, dispelling the shadows of doubt. Another vital step is to shift your focus to gratitude. Gratitude reorients our perspective, helping us count our blessings instead of our burdens. Reflect on God's faithfulness in the past and trust that he will continue to provide. Gratitude is a powerful antidote to anxiety because it reminds us of God's unchanging goodness. Jesus also teaches us to live one day at a time. In Matthew chapter 6, 34, he gently reminds us, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today is all we have, let us embrace it fully, knowing God's grace is sufficient for every moment. Finally, trust in God's provision. Much of our worry stems from a fear of lack, be it financial, emotional, or physical needs. But Philippians chapter 4, 19 reassures us, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Rest in this promise, he is a faithful provider, always present, always enough. With these steps, we can move from worry to unwavering trust in the God who holds all things together. When we release our worries to God, a profound shift takes place within us. The burdens that once weighed us down no longer have the power to control our thoughts, emotions, or decisions. This doesn't mean that our challenges magically vanish, but rather that we are infused with the strength and courage to face them head on. Isaiah chapter 26, 3 offers a beautiful promise, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. This perfect peace isn't dependent on external circumstances, it is a deep, unshakable assurance rooted in God's faithfulness. C.S. Lewis captured this truth with poignant clarity, when we lose one blessing, another is often most unexpectedly given in its place. Trusting God is not about living a life free of trials, it's about recognizing that in every moment, whether of joy or sorrow, he is working all things together for our good and his glory, Romans chapter 8, 28. Losses may come, but they are never the end of the story. In God's hands, even our pain is transformed into something beautiful and redemptive. When we trust him, our perspective changes. Instead of focusing on what we fear or lack, we begin to see his providence and provision in unexpected ways. The moments we once viewed as setbacks become opportunities for growth. The spaces left by losses are filled with blessings we could not have imagined. This trust doesn't make us immune to pain, but it gives us hope. It reminds us that no matter what we face, we are not alone. God walks with us through every valley, and he uses even our deepest struggles to draw us closer to him. In releasing our worries, we embrace the freedom to live fully, anchored in his peace and surrounded by his love. Consider James, a young father struggling to provide for his family after unexpectedly losing his job. The weight of his responsibilities felt unbearable, and fear crept into every corner of his mind. Bills were piling up, and the uncertainty of how he would support his wife and two young children consumed him. One sleepless night, feeling utterly defeated, James opened his Bible and stumbled upon Matthew chapter 11. 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He knelt in prayer, laying his fears before God, and for the first time in weeks, he felt a glimmer of peace. The next morning, still unsure of what the future held, James began his job search again with a renewed sense of hope. Later that week, a former colleague reached out with an unexpected opportunity, an opening at a company perfectly suited to James's skills. The position not only provided for his family but allowed for more time at home with his children. Though the process of rebuilding wasn't without its challenges, James clung to his faith, trusting in God's provision. This experience became a turning point in James's life. The crisis that had once seemed insurmountable revealed God's faithfulness in ways he had never imagined. James often reflects on those difficult days, sharing his story to encourage others who face similar struggles. He reminds them, as he now firmly believes, that God's timing is perfect, even when we cannot see it. Trusting in him doesn't remove life's challenges, but it provides an anchor in the storm, a peace that surpasses all understanding, and a constant reminder that we are never alone. The ocean's waves may never cease, but neither does God's faithfulness. Each day, we face a choice, to worry or to trust. 
Choose trust and experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Remember the words of C.S. Lewis, faith is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted, in spite of your changing moods. Let today be the day you surrender your worries to the one who holds the stars in place. He cares for you deeply, and his plans for you are far greater than anything you could imagine. Trust him, for he is good, and his love endures forever.